Hi! This video is part of a Coursera course which we are actually producing. If you want to know more, just check out the description where you can actually register for the Coursera course for free. If you find any flaws in the video, just comment below and I will do my best to address your concerns. Thanks a lot for watching and please don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you like the video. LSTMs are so powerful that we can dedicate a whole lecture on how they are working. You could take an entire course on LSTMs and if you are planning to do so, please check out the description of this video. But we will try to give you a more intuitive way of looking at LSTMs. So this is a single neuron in LSTMs. By the way, LSTMs stands for Long Short Term Memory Networks. And as in a feedforward network, it maps an input xt to an output vector ht by using weights and an activation function. Note that the same holds whether you are using scalars or vectors as input and output. But we now see a lot of additional components. So the first thing we notice is that there is no direct connection between xt and ht. All data flows through ct, which is the so-called cell state. Cell state is the actual memory of the LSTM neuron. Notice that there are three additional units present in an LSTM neuron. An input gate, an output gate and a forget gate. Those three gates are controlling the state of CT. The way how this is controlled is as follows. So have a look at the input first. The first thing we notice is that XT is not only used as input of the neuron, but also as input to the gate. So the input gate as the other gates has a separate weight vector which is drained from the input data and learns to control the influx of information into the cell state CT. This is done by a vector dot product between the input XT after it has been squashed by the activation function and the output of the input gate. In other words, through the weight vector of the input gate, the neuron can learn from the training data when it is a good idea to open the gate and have the input stored in the cell or when it is a bad idea to remember things and close the influx information into the cell state CT. Note that this is a continuous value. So it is like a valve which can be partially opened and closed. Finally, it is important to notice that all the cell state has an influence on the gate. This is again accomplished through a separate weight vector so that the actual input gate is controlled by the historic cell state as well as by the actual value of xt. So now let's have a look at the output gate. Again, it is controlled by the actual value xt and by the actual cell state ct. Here the output gate controls how much of cell state ct gets output to downstream neurons connected to ht. So this topology is the initial LSTM proposed by Sepp Hochreiter and Jürgen Schmidhuber in 1997. In 1999, Felix Gers, Jürgen Schmidhuber and Fred Kumnis added an additional component, the forget gate. They discovered that without the capability of forgetting the cell state CT may grow indefinitely and eventually causes the network to break down. Again, the forget gate is controlled by the actual input XT and the current cell state CT. And again through calculation of a dot product between the output of the forget gate and the previous cell state CT, it controls how much of the actual cell state CT is preserved. Another exotic but totally exciting neural network topology is an autoencoder. So let's learn about it in the next lecture. Thanks a lot for watching and please don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you liked the video.